Hi students, in this video I'd like to cover an exceptional case in the electron filling patterns for neutral atoms and I would like to stress that this is for neutral atoms only. And I want to make sure that we don't get this confused with electron filling patterns for ions. So again, this is for neutral atoms only and that is what we've been doing so far. And this exceptional case is called S promotion. You'll see why we call it that here in just a moment. So a little bit of explanation here. Let's imagine that we have the 3D subshell right here. This subshell has five orbitals. Each orbital can take two electrons. And I should make a little correction. Rather than orbitals, this really should say subshells. So we're talking about half-filled or fully-filled subshells. So here's a 3D subshell. It has five orbitals in it. Each orbital can take two electrons, and so a fully filled 3D subshell would have 10 electrons total. So a half filled subshell would have only five electrons in it, and it would look like this. And if I put a fifth electron there, it would be half filled, right? So that is a half filled subshell. When this happens, when we either have five electrons or ten electrons, half-filled or fully-filled D subshells, then the whole subshell relaxes to a lower energy state. So this whole subshell drops in energy. And another way of saying this is that you gain stability when you can half-fill or fully fill a D subshell. So this is especially important for some transition metals. Electrons may actually energetically prefer to populate the D orbital before they pair up in an S orbital below them, if doing so results in a half-filled or fully filled subshell. And this is called S promotion. So I want to go back and show you exactly what this looks like. We're going back to this page where we covered electron diagrams. And at the time, I asked you to reserve this space over on the right-hand side. So if you wrote notes here, then you'll need to get a, a clean piece of paper. Otherwise, you've got this space, and I would like for you to write another set of empty orbitals up to the 5S subshell. So here we go. 1S. 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d, 4p, 5s. And every s subshell has a single s orbital in it. Every p subshell has how many? It has three orbitals in it. And every D subshell has five orbitals in it. Okay, so I'm going to show you what happens when we start filling this electron diagram and we get to the 3D subshell. So we're going to start, we're going to start filling in electrons using our rules, alpha principle, Pauli exclusion principle, and Hund's rule. And I'm go just going to start counting them up. And this is not for any particular element, I'm just going to start counting them up. One electron, there's, there's hydrogen. Two electrons, there's helium. Filled subshell. Three electrons is lithium. Four electrons is beryllium. Five electrons is boron. Six electrons is carbon. Seven electrons is nitrogen. Eight electrons is oxygen. Nine electrons is fluorine. 10 electrons is neon. So far so good? Let's keep going. 11 electrons is sodium. 12 electrons is magnesium. 13 electrons is aluminum. 14 electrons is silicon. 15 electrons is phosphorus. 16 electrons is sulfur. 17 electrons is chlorine. 
18 electrons is argon. Nothing fancy here, we've just been filling them up as we learned. And let's continue on. 19 electrons is potassium. 20 electrons is calcium. And now we're starting to get into the 3D subshell. And in the 3D subshell, if we look on our periodic table, that starts with scandium and goes across this first row of the transition metals. And we are now in the 4S 3D. However, there is some exceptional behavior as we fill in these next 10 electrons. And so here we go. Here's 21 for scandium. For titanium, we have 22. For vanadium, we have 23. And here's the first big exception. In the way that we normally fill these electrons, for neutral atoms occurs when we hit 24 electrons for chromium. For chromium, if we filled in electrons the way we have been doing, we would put an electron here, and we would think, ah, there's our 24 electrons, and that's chromium. But this is not the electron diagram for chromium. Instead, what happens is that this electron diagram is one electron away from having a half-filled D subshell. You see that? I almost have a half-filled D subshell, and if I had one more electron right there, it would have a half-filled D subshell. And if I had a half-filled D subshell, then this whole 3D subshell would gain energy stability and reduce in energy to drop down below the 4S subshell energy. So the chromium atom actually takes advantage of that. And it says, aha, I can take one of my 4S electrons and I can promote it to the 3D subshell up here. So, And so this is called S promotion. It promotes one of its S electrons up to the D subshell. And in doing so, it drops the energy of the 3D subshell down so that it's a more stable atom. So I want you to know, notice what happened. We no longer have two electrons here in the 4S. We just have one electron. So now let's write the electron configuration of the chromium atom. So here we go. We're going to write the electron for the chromium atom. And the chromium atom has all the electrons filled up through the 3P subshell. That would take us through noble gas, which is the noble gas behind chromium. It's argon, right there. So argon is going to be our noble gas core. So for chromium, we're going to use argon as our noble gas core. And then beyond the argon, chromium gas core, there's argon, we have a 4S1 and a 3D5. Now if I had done this electron filling the way I have been for other elements, this would not be the electron configuration. Instead, I would have said argon plus 4S2 plus 3D1234, right? Argon 4S2, 3D4. But do you see how it has promoted one of its S electrons into the D subshell? It has promoted one of its S electrons into the D subshell. And it did this because by doing so, it gets a half-filled D subshell, which is energetically more stable. Now, the very next electron that we are going to put in here will be for manganese. So that will give us 25 electrons total. And that next electron is going to backfill the gap here in 4S that was left by that S promotion. So now we have two electrons. This is manganese with 25 electrons now, okay? Then we add 26, 27, 28, and here comes another exception. When I add, I have my 29th electron in there. 
that corresponds to copper, 29 electrons total. But this is not the electron configuration for copper. Copper is one electron away from having a fully filled D subshell. And so what do you think it's going to do? In order to get the stability that comes from having a fully filled D subshell, it is going to promote one of its S electrons to the D subshell so that it gains that stability. So this is not the electron configuration for copper. It's going to S promote. And now this is the electron configuration for copper. One electron in the 4S and 10 electrons in the 3D. Okay? So if we were going to add one here, it didn't ask us to, but copper would be argon 4S1 3D10. So notice what is happening here. If we are one electron away from having a half-filled or fully filled D subshell, then we will promote one of the S electrons to the D subshell so that we can get a D5 or D10 situation. And the atom overall will gain stability. And then the next electron that's added will just go back and backfill that S subshell so that we have two electrons in the S subshell. Now, not every atom in the transition series does this. It's just a few of them. It happens for chromium and molybdenum and copper, silver, gold. So, let's look at where those are. Chromium and molybdenum, but not tungsten. It does not happen with tungsten. Tungsten does not S-promote. Chromium and molybdenum will both S-promote to allow the atom to have a half-filled D subshell. And now all three, copper, silver, and gold, will S promote to allow the atom to have a fully filled D subshell. So you need to remember those five, chromium and molybdenum, and copper, silver, gold. Those are the only ones we're going to discuss right now. There are other anomalies in electron filling, but we're going to focus on these five. One, two, Three, four, five. And again, I want to stress that this is for neutral atoms only. We're not talking about ions. So now I've got a couple of practice problems for you. With this in mind, and recognizing that I've told you that silver and gold engage in S promotion, I would like for you to write the electron configuration for silver and for gold. And see if you can do it without having to draw a diagram. If you need to draw a diagram, that's fine. But see if you can figure out what they might be without having to draw the diagram to fill them in. Okay? So pause the video, answer those two questions, and when you're finished, resume the question, and I will complete those. Okay, coming back to this, after pausing the video, we're going to take a look at silver first. Silver is right here. We know that it S promotes. So we're going to have one electron in the S subshell and 10 electrons in the D subshell. So let's look at what the electron configuration would be without S promotion. We would have krypton, and then we would have 5S2 and 4D9, right? So if we did not do S promotion, and this is incorrect, it would be Oops, silver, core is krypton, and then we would have 5S24D9. But this is incorrect, right? We know that this is incorrect because it is one electron away from having a fully filled D subshell, and so it's going to promote one of its S electrons to do it. So this is not what we want. We want one of these S electrons to go to the D subshell. And if we do that, we get the correct electron configuration for silver. Neutral silver is krypton 5S1 because it's promoting one of those S electrons over here to the D subshell for D. And what does this number become? 10. And there we go. 
And we reasoned through that, figured out what it was without having to draw the diagram. So the easy way to do this is for these five elements, you can just figure out what they would normally be, what their electron configuration would normally be by looking at the periodic table and, and recognizing when you have an S2D4 situation and you can promote an electron over, or an S2D9 situation and you can promote that electron over. And which elements does it happen with? Chromium and molybdenum and copper, silver, gold. So that then brings us to gold, and gold is down here, what is its atomic number 79? If we did not consider S promotion, then the electron configuration of gold would be a core of xenon, and then 6s2, 4f14, we have all these f electrons, 4f14, and 5d1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, right? 6s2, 4f14, 5d9. But this is a case where we do S promotion. So it's going to take one of those S electrons and put it into the D subshell. So now it is going to be xenon, 6s1, 4f14, 5d10. So let's write that out. Gold, xenon core, and then it doesn't have 6s2, it has promoted one of those, so now it's 6s1, 4f14, 5d10. And students often ask me, do the f electrons go before or after the d electrons? Either is acceptable. So by that I mean I could easily just have written the 6s1, 5d10, 4f14 in that order. That's fine. So I want to emphasize what happened here. The gold atom had an opportunity to promote one of its S electrons to get a fully filled D subshell. And so that S electron populated the D subshell, and the reason that it did so was that it reduced the overall energy of the atom. And so the atom became more stable with electrons in these subshells than to have two electrons in the S subshell and only nine in the D subshell. Okay, so again, which ones does this happen for? Chromium and molybdenum, but not tungsten, and copper, silver, gold. This is an important exception, and so you do need to know this, and it is called S promotion, and S promotion only occurs with neutral atoms. There are similar rules that we use for ions as well as an exception that looks a lot like S promotion, but we're going to call it something different. So for right now, we're just dealing with S promotion in neutral atoms and only with these five elements.